When you've had a hectic day, a ready-to-heat and eat meal can be a real lifesaver. But often it's difficult to taste the difference between the package and its contents. It's a completely different experience when you can select the freshest ingredients and prepare them with time and love, which is how Chef Vani Padiachi prefers to do it. Karishma joined her for this tasty lunch, taking the old school route from farm to table. With the skies over the valley hinting at a possibility of rain, Vani had already begun harvesting her ingredients when Karishma arrived. It brings me so much joy to be able to walk into my garden and harvest fresh, beautiful produce to create tasty meals. Vani Padiachi shares my love for farm-to-table cooking and today we're going to create a wonderful farm-to-table feast. Hi Vani, so lovely to see you Hi, again. Hi Kushma, welcome. I've come here to work, so let's get started. So let's go to work. So we're going to harvest some chilies next. I should have worn my wellies. <laughs> <laughs> These look beautiful. They are. How many do we About want? Five or six, and get some green ones as well. Krishma, these look gorgeous, so we can clip these. Okay, I'm gonna grab those. I must say, there's something very satisfying about picking an actual vegetable and taking it to your kitchen and cooking it. I know, so let's go start cooking. Yeah, let's go. Bunny, what's our first dish for our farm-to-table feast? The dish we're doing today is vegetable kofta. Lovely. So pan's nice and heated through, so I'm gonna add some ghee. And I don't really cook with oil. Just melt that up and then a little bit of ginger garlic puree. And then I'm going to add some cashmere spice. Yum. Ground coriander. Mix that through and then the vegetables. Carrots. Some peas. Cauliflower. And then with the paneer, I'm going to just give it a good crush. I'm going to add a little bit of salt. Okay. Some mashed potatoes. And then this is where I'll have the basin flour is, it'll bring it all together. I'm gonna to take that to the kitchen and have it blended to a paste. Would you mind separating the eggs for me, please? Not a problem, how many? Three. Perfect. Okay, thank you. I'm on it. How are we doing here? Oh, perfectly separated. Thank you very much. So this is our kofta mix. I didn't blend it to an absolute mush. So it's still got a bit of texture in there. It is, so you bite into your vegetables. Lovely. So we're going to make our kofta into little cone shapes and then we're going to dust it in cake flour, egg white and panko crumbs. Why panko crumbs and not bread crumbs? It's a lighter crumb. We're going to take some a mixture, a good dollop of it, not too big. And then you're going to dust that into the flour. You can shake it around a bit. And egg white. And into the crumbs. Okay, so I'm gonna have a go. Go. <laughs> okay. A little bit of mixture. Yep. Into a shape. A rustic cone. And then into the into flour, the just to give it a good coating. Okay, and then into the egg whites and then into the panko. Yes, there we go, lovely. And now we fry. Yes. And we're gonna fry that till just beautiful golden brown. It roughly takes about two to three minutes and at home if you don't have a deep fat fryer. So put a pot of oil on, a kadai would normally work. Yes. And you can fry it in there. Let me plate up. It smells so delicious. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna garnish with a little bit of fresh coriander. And you can serve it with some coriander mint chutney or some tamarind chutney. Sounds delicious. But we've still got quite a bit of cooking, so let's get cracking. So our next dish is Mitch Bangan Kasalan. Aubergines and peppers cooked in a Hyderabad gravy. So to start with the gravy, I've got some sesame seeds, desiccated coconut, cashew nuts and yogurt. So we bring that to a quick boil. And then as you can see, I've pre-made the space. Okay, to start off, we've got a hot pan. In goes some ghee. The spice I'm using is black mustard seeds. Some curry leaves. Mango powder. Mango powder adds that tartness to the dish. Mangoes make everything better. <laughs> it does. A little bit of turmeric, some Kashmiri spice. And I'm just going to give that a 
quick stir to that, can you pour in the gravy, please? That's perfect. And while this is cooking for a few minutes, let's prepare the vegetables. Perfect. So we've got peppers, which you're going to cut in quarters, but not separate them. Okay. So it's the peppers and the baby aubergines that we harvested earlier. So I'm going to pop these into the fryer. And you've noticed that I've not taken out the seeds from the peppers. And why is that, Bonnie? You don't want it to fall apart. So if I'm going to take out the seeds and it's edible once it's cooked. The aubergines from you. Bonnie, how do you know when those are ready? They will have a bit of a floppy look to it. So let's take the peppers out. They look really beautiful fried up like this, I must say. They are delicious. Place them in gently so all that sauce gets into the cavities of the peppers and the aubergines. That looks yummy. All I'm going to do is arrange the peppers first. Now it's all about presentation, remember? Look at that. That sauce looks decadent. A quick sprig of coriander's garnish. And we move on to our next dish. I can't wait. We're going to make barwan simla mirch. Lovely. What does that involve? So it's bell peppers that we're going to stuff with peas, onions, potatoes, paneer. To start off, we have some ghee. In goes the onions. I'm going to add a little bit of asafoetida, some garam masala, turmeric, a little bit of Kashmiri spice, and once again, mango powder. Give it a quick stir, and in goes the peas, and some grated potatoes. Krishna, while this is cooking, can you grate the paneer for me on the coarse side, please? That's perfect. And then you can just pop that in here. Good stuff. And we're just giving it a quick toss together and we can sort of mush it. So while this is cooking, I would like you to take the tops of the pepper. Okay, filling's almost done. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt to taste. And now is the fun part. So you're going to get as much stuffing as you can into your pepper. Just squish that in. We cook it in the oven for about 25 minutes on 180 degrees. Put that into the baking dish. And then I'm going to just drizzle it with a little bit of ghee. You can never have enough ghee. So this is ready for the oven. Can you please bring one of the other platters to the table? Of course I can. Here is our peppers. So I've made you some beetroot chutney, tomato chutney, and with the red chilies, I've made a chili paste. Bonnie, look what a beautiful table we've created. I cannot wait to taste these. Go ahead. And? This tastes so good, I actually don't know what I'm going to taste next. You have to try everything, so a little by little. Sounds fantastic. Karishma followed Bonnie's advice with samples to taste. There wasn't an item on the menu that didn't demand a second helping. 